tyrosine is a really very interesting compound as it's used in yeah, nutritional feeds for animals, but also in nutritional supplements. It's used in as raw materials to produce antibiotics, peptide hormones, pharmaceuticals, and I mean chemicals in general. So with this reaction, um, it's a, a tyrosine phenolase can produce a tyrosine in a kind of very interesting way because here uh, one has very cheap substrates, so ammonia, pyruvate, phenol, and can produce basically chiral um, ammonia, uh, tyrosine. However, this reaction, it suffers from some limitations. So for one, um, the enzyme is really not that stable. Um, it gets inactivated by high substrate concentrations. And also from an in reaction engineering standpoint, um, the substrate has a very low solubility. So um, this limits also the reaction. So these uh, limitations need to be addressed. And we are at first to find a stable enzyme. Um, so the first thing we did was um, perform enzyme screening to find suitable enzymes. And uh, I will not go into much detail here, but we found one uh, enzyme from Cytobacter freundi. Um, it showed some conversion, but the yield was basically uh, not detectable that much. Um, but we choose to um, use this as a backbone to perform our protein engineering. Um, we have here certain targets um, for the reaction. So um, definitely the phenol loading should be much more increased five times to at least um, around 50 grams per liter. Um, and the enzyme loading should be also decreased. And yeah, I mean, we want to achieve fu full conversion and a high yield. So definitely we will go for that. So we had the advantage that there is already a crystal structure also with the bound cofactor, which is PLP. And so we had a quite good starting point to go forward with um, protein engineering. And for protein engineering, we use our proprietary um, platform. And this works so that we um, have uh, first an in silico part where we identify hotspots. I will go into a little bit more detail in later slides. And so we can really perform pre-screening, also molecular dynamics, uh, quantum mechanics, and so on, and see or um, calculate how good these spots are for mutation. And we can then also already recombine these uh, in silico. So we really can uh, create smart libraries, reduce the library size so we can and then also go in the laboratory and perform the high throughput analysis in a uh, yeah, good, good time. And these genes need to be expressed, synthesized, and then we can go um, to the high throughput screening where we use mainly HPLC and GC. Uh, oftentimes we have chiral uh, compounds, so we definitely need in more information than a normal screening with a color compound gives. And with the information we get out of this screening, we improve our um, computational models and then can also go into a next round of evolution. So um, I will go now to our library design here. So we really wanted to improve the phenol tolerance and overall enzyme stability. And what we do here is uh, we do a multi-sequence alignment and a structure alignment to find hotspots um, where certain regions of the enzyme are very flexible. And these we will then target for enzyme engineering. So um, one can then identify highly conserved and not conserved positions. 
and one can use uh, even um, open source tools for that. So normal protein blast tools, the tools from MPI by Informatics, uh, for example, they're the alignment viewer. And with the in silico screening, we could identify some key regions that are very sensitive to uh, yeah, also then uh, the phenols that are not conserved. And uh, there we um, performed then also the um, engineering. So we also did uh, here some MD simulations. Uh, maybe Bauerjin can then also later go into more detail, um, also maybe with writing. And you always get um, with the screenings uh, what you screen for. So we adjusted here also then the phenol load to reflect um, their commercial or more commercial um, conditions, increasing it to 60 grams per liter in the simulation and performed the contact analysis to see where the phenol binds or is quite close to the enzyme. And these regions um, might then cause denaturation of the enzyme. So we wanted to stabilize uh, these regions. So we really um, designed and focused libraries. And uh, coming here to um, the improvements. Um, so already in the first round, I mean, we did not get much uh, improvement here, only 1.2 fold improvement. Um, but uh, as it's oftentimes with these enzyme evolution rounds, um, you don't have a linear increase, but more an exponential increase. So in the later rounds, one gets uh, much more higher um, fold increase uh, improvements. So in the first rounds, we really focused more on the stability side and then uh, later on targeted also um, that the enzyme is stable for even a longer time in the phenol uh, medium. And at the end, we achieved 18-fold improvement after the uh, fourth round. And uh, the enzyme is highly active, even when it's just incubated with the phenol for uh, 40, uh, 24 hours stays active and we can achieve um, even with this uh, condition 80 percent conversion and also high yield um, but what we also observed uh, with this process so not only does it need improvement from protein engineering point of view but also from the process side so um, when the phenol tolerance cannot be improved further or there are also better ways. So sometimes one can also stop there and uh, develop the process. Um, so making uh, enzyme engineering unnecessary. And here we uh, choose to go or switch to a fat batch approach um, where we dose then the phenol into the reaction. And so we can also decrease um, the contact with the phenol. Also here um, we have that uh, the phenol is not so highly um, soluble in the medium. So this also plays um, as an advantage. And with our um, mutant, we achieved um, very high conversion and then also yield with this new setup. Um, but it's also um, important to notice that phenols overall always are quite sensitive to oxidation. So what we also see is that um, if we increase the temperature, um, we have more side products. Also with the ox oxygen is always uh, trouble. So these phenols get uh, kind of activated by light and oxygen to produce then side products, reactive oxygen species. So this will also then deactivate the enzyme. And we even improved then further our fat batch. So before we used the continuous dosing and then uh, we changed it to more suitable one where we um, had an interval dosing, 10 times dosing. 
And this also increased the reaction um, further so that we had then a high yield of um, above 95%, which is then already really applicable or much more applicable for commercial scale production. And at the moment, this process is um, at pilot scale. So we could here really um, improve the reaction, not only from enzyme engineering standpoint, but also with uh, reaction engineering and got from an wild type enzyme that is very highly inactivated by phenol and has, has a low space time yield to an uh, industrial enzyme that uh, is much, much more stable uh, in this medium and has also an increased space time yield. And this we really achieved here um, by identif identifying um, these key regions where um, the enzyme is prone to denaturate due to contact with the phenol. So overall, all these um, regions are um, above six angstrom away from the PLP and the active site. So usually uh, with enzyme evolution, one looks first at the active site, but in this case, it shows that also looking at the surrounding is really important and that we always assess with our, um, with our tools. And with that, I want to uh, conclude also the talk that we really found these uh, spots with our tools, uh, achieved commercial enzyme. And uh, just small uh, promotion also. So we, we offer all these uh, um, yeah, enzyme screening services, FIFA services, also enzyme evolution services, combining our uh, technology platforms, so molecular biology, automation, bioinformatics, high throughput screening. I think all these are very important tools one needs to really um, build up a successful process. And we also go then to commercialization. So we have departments for process development downstream. We can improve the fermentation and manufacturing. And we also have then the quality management to go uh, really to large scale, multi-ton scale production of chemicals. And there, our service offer really covers um, the whole range with the enzyme identification. So we offer here um, experimental parts, but also pure in silico approaches. And then we have a reaction engineering and enzyme engineering. As explained, we also focus here on enzyme immobilization to recycle our enzyme, because that's also a key component to reduce the costs of a process. Yeah, so um, we already have several uh, industrial processes developed, and we also offer that for other customers. And with that, I want to thank uh, the whole team at Enzymars, especially the team that participated in this project. And also thank you for the kind invitation. Thank you so much for the presentation, Daniel. Thank you so much also for stepping in. Um, it was great to hear about the improvements. Uh, so we have a few questions in uh, Q&A. So Andrew, if you could maybe um, promote the, the, the people to the panelists uh, so that they can ask uh, uh, questions. Um, but before, before I, can, I, can I maybe ask a quick question? So I was uh, curious, because um, uh, uh, in this project you were evolving for a natural uh, substrate, um, did you actually test uh, uh, the performance of this enzyme on other phenols in, and can you comment uh, whether you obtain high activity? Uh, so maybe I can address this question. So are you, are you asking about the other phenol uh, derivatives? Yes. Uh, we haven't uh, tested you know, other uh, we haven't tested extensively on these you know, similar or uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, phenol 
directives because this project was uh, was done by for a customer and they basically ask for the uh, tyrosine uh, synthesis and uh, of course i think it's possible to test uh, for other uh, similar uh, compounds uh, especially i think there's uh, another possible to do the doba uh, synthesis yes uh, we did a simple test, uh, and so also the, the data is on our patent publication, and uh, it works. But uh, we didn't do a, a process. Uh, uh, more more detailed process study. Mm -hmm. So we do have a couple questions in the uh, the question window. So I'm going to promote Lucian Wong to ask her question or their question live. So you should have access to talk. Great, thanks very much, uh, Andrew. Uh, thanks very much for the talk. Uh, I guess my question is more of a general one that I posted into the uh, chat box there. Uh, uh, do you have sort of well-developed tools uh, that allow you to engineer or have strategies to engineer for uh, either protein solubility or, or a reduction in protein aggregation? Because I guess that that's kind of also important in terms of developing a process. And uh, of course, there are many interesting enzymes in the literature that have very interesting chemistry, but are, are hard to work with because they're just not very soluble or they're prone to aggregation. Yeah, so yeah. what we always start is uh, with an in silico approach. So we uh, perform these analyses. So usually it's that uh, we look for a substrate or other components that interact with the protein. But um, it should be also possible um, with proteins. So we can also target their um, regions uh, where the protein interacts with, which, uh, with itself, basically. Mm -hmm. But maybe, uh, Haibin, you can uh, comment more yeah, on that. I guess this, this question probably happens in two possible scenarios. First is for the protein expression. So if you feel uh, protein is poorly expressed or expressed in including in bodies, this is of course can be engineered, you know, to change the surface radius to make it more soluble, or uh, not into uh, making it into in including bodies. Uh, is there, I don't, I'm not sure where the, the, you, you need a specified, uh, specifically, you know, uh, developed by, Informatic tools because this can be generally addressed using a typical you know, evolution uh, uh, program. Right, right. And of yep. course, I, I think there's a tools to predict the protein solubility. This can be used. Yeah, we we've tried a few in the that that, that I guess are, are available. Uh, they they're not always very uh, good or they don't give results that translate very well to to experiments we found. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, in general, I think this is typically done in a typical evolution program. You know, everything, uh, you know, you, you screen what you, you get what screen for. So you set up an assay and uh, anything that can increase your protein expression or especially increase the soluble expression yeah. can be detected in your assay. Great, thanks very much. Great, so <clears throat> I guess we can move to another question from, uh, Greg Kubik, so I can give you permission to speak. Hang on. You should have access to your microphone. Yes, I hope it works. Thanks yes. a lot for the, for, for the great presentation. So I have one question regarding the, the feeding strategy, why the pulsed feeding was uh, more successful than the continuous feeding, whether you used in continuous feeding a continuous rate, you observed some accumulation of the phenol over time or whether you actually used a set off for, for the phenol concentration that would control the uh, feeding. Mm, yeah, that, that's a very good question. So yeah, this uh, we don't have our process uh, uh, expert here. Uh, my uh, guess is that uh, uh, in the continuous feeding, it's, it takes more time to actually to figure out the speed uh, especially when you scale up in uh, probably in larger scale, you have to adapt your feeding speed to the larger reaction vessels. To make this simpler, I think our process uh, engineer probably uh, they prefer to do this uh, uh, batch wise or fat batch wise, you know, dosing, 
in those uh, uh, limit uh, amount of phenol and let it consume by the enzyme, then you make a set, uh, next dose. Probably this is easier to control, easier to scale up. Hmm. Okay, thanks. You always start with a simple approach and then you go from there and uh, improve that. So the next step would then also be to um, measure everything in real time and then you can adjust also the feeding strategy to uh, further optimize the process. But uh, we always um, then work for the customer and when the customer then says, okay, it's enough, then uh, we also stop there but we can also go further. Great. So maybe time for one more question before we move on to the next talk. So uh, Tristan, um, are you available to speak? I have unmuted, unmuted you. Yeah, you hear me? Yes. All right. Yeah. So this, this reaction, I assume in Citrobacter, probably happens in the opposite direction, right? It probably degrades uh, phenylalanine or tyrosine. Um, mm -hmm. And a back of the envelope calculation gives like a delta G naught at molar concentrations of like an equilibrium constant of like 10 to the fourth. <laughs> so mm -hmm. you need to put in tens of molars of substrates for this reaction to reach equilibrium. So I'm trying to wrap my head around how you drive this reaction in the direction mm -hmm. of uh, tyrosine production. Yeah, yeah, that's also a very good question. Uh, yeah, this actually, this is actually actually this is reversible. Uh, from the name of the enzyme, you can see tyrosine phenolase. And uh, in our process, we actually used, uh, I think, a much more equivalent of ammonia. I think in one of our slides, it shows that uh, the phenol to pyruvate to ammonia ratio is one to one to five. Uh, mm -hmm. we, yeah, we test the different, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, Combination and we find this ratio works uh, uh, well or mo most economic, uh, you know, um, most uh, economically, you know, uh, in the process. To some ammonia is uh, the, the cheapest, I, I believe. So we can overdose uh, much more ammonium to drive the equilibrium. Also, it's very soluble. Yeah. Okay. And maybe your products are crashing out or something like that. It helps. Yeah. Yeah. The the tyrosine okay. is not that soluble actually. So right. it, it will crash out. That explains. That explains yeah. that. Cool. And also, phenol is also not very soluble, so it also plays yeah. into it. Mm -hmm.